Two and a half millennia ago, the dwarves established themselves as a presence among the mountains of Cosmodon. Over the years following the founding of Ironforge, the dwarves expanded their reach. To the east, a massive waterfall descended into the bay below, fed by a large lock. The dwarves set to work there, building one of the greatest architectural wonders on all of Azeroth, the Stone Rock Dam. The dam slowed the water, causing the lock to grow in size. The dwarves settled along the shores of the large lock, and called the land Loch Modan. The Loch Modan continued to serve as a home for outlying dwarves for many years, relatively untouched by the ravages of the wars around it. When the War of the Three Hammers broke out, the Wild Hammer clan settled north of Loch Modan, building Grim Batoll in the wetlands. The Dark Irons ventured south, to the Red Ridge Mountains. From there they built an army, and struck their adversaries to the north. The Bronzebeards of Ironforge and the Wild Hammers of Grim Batoll held against the Dark Iron assault, joining forces to push Tharasan back to Red Ridge, and watched as he summoned Ragnaros, destroying much of Red Ridge and erecting the molten peak of Black Rock Mountain. After the war, the Thanes of the Bronzebeard and the Wildhammer clans became kings of their respective cities, and eventually passed away. Their sons, seeking to memorialize the two great leaders, commissioned grand statues at the southern entrance to Loch Modan in what is now known as the Valley of Kings. The great statues of Mandaran Bronzebeard and Cowardross Wildhammer serve as a warning to any who would assault the lands of the dwarves. That warning would be ignored with the coming of the Second War. The Orcish Horde brought with them bloodshed, driving the dwarves from Loch Modan as they warred with the Alliance. After the Alliance drove the Horde back from their lands, the dwarves of Ironforge returned to Loch Modan, reclaiming it for their kingdom. Evidence of the Horde's activities in Loch Modan such as siege weapons scattered across the bottom of the loch, can still be seen decades later. Apart from the orcs, Loch Madon has been in long contention with the Dark Iron Dwarves. The dam in particular is a hot spot for Dark Iron activity. The Dwarves of Ironforge have been forced to increase security to prevent Dark Iron seizing control of the crucial landmark. The Dark Irons believed the dam property of the Tharasan Empire. Its construction was headed by Fran Clorn Forgerite before the War of the Three Hammers, a respected architect of the Dark Iron Clan. Aside from the dam, Forgerite's accomplishments include many of the dwarven structures under Black Rock Mountain, including Black Rock Spire and much of Black Rock Depths. The Cataclysm changed the landscape of Loch Madon drastically. When Deathwing passed over the Stone Rock Dam, following his cataclysmic emergence from Deepholm, the dam buckled, spilling the water locked away in the loch. The wetlands below were flooded, and the loch was nearly drained completely, leaving a bowl in the ground filled with debris, thresher corpses, and buzzards looking for an easy meal. Since then, a great number of threats have moved into Loch Madon, seeking to control the land for themselves. Many of the dwarven defenders in Loch Madon were called away to fight in the growing wars between Horde and Alliance, following Garrosh Hellscream's rise to war chief. Instead, Adventurers are sent to Loch Modan to help contain the growing threats. Upon their arrival, the adventurer learns of a trog infestation growing in Loch Modan. If left unchecked, the trogs could pose a serious threat to Ironforge itself, similar to the eviction of the gnomes from Gnomeragon. There is also an increase in kobold activity, and the adventurer finds that the kobolds have taken many of the errant trogs as slaves. Kobolds, not being intelligent enough to organize anything beyond a candle robbery, are found to be led by gnolls. The adventurer also learns that the gnolls have murlocs under their command, planning to arm them and use them as an unstoppable army. The adventurer is able to spy on a meeting between gnoll, murloc, and kobold, and using murloc pheromones, cause the murlocs to betray their comrades, preemptively ending the gnoll assault on dwarven land. The Dark Iron Dwarves haven't ended their campaign in Loch Madon since the Cataclysm. Spies have infiltrated the town of Thelsamar, and stolen documents detailing important Explorers League movements, threatening the League's activities in the area. They've also ambushed supply carts on their way to an excavation in eastern Loch Madon. The Adventurer works to retake the stolen documents, 
and rout out spies and turncoats in the area. To the east, dwarves are excavating the land and had found several interesting statues and artifacts before the site became overrun with trogs. To the southeast, the hunting lodge known as Farstrider Retreat is still operational and seeking out new and old prey throughout Lochmadon in an attempt to make the area safer and to collect trophies to brag about. Perhaps the greatest threat the Loch has faced since the Cataclysm is the Twilight's Hammer cultists, spilling out of the Twilight Highlands. The cultists have begun to use their mages to coax Elementium from the Earth, growing and building their twisted spires, claiming the land for their cause. The adventurer attempts to end their progression into Lochmadon by breaking the Twilight Landshaper and killing the leader of the Ogres in Wogrosh Stronghold. Though not enough to stop the cult entirely, it is hoped that the cult will be slowed enough that the remaining defenders of Lochmadon can contend with the threat. Lochmadon was a peaceful, outlying area of Cosmodon before the Cataclysm struck. Now, through the turmoil, the dwarves seek to reassert their claim to the land and restore it to its former tranquility. Whether the dwarves will succeed is yet to be seen, but as long as there is a land to fight for, they will put everything they have into keeping it safe.